This is Matt De La Pena, author of children's book, Last Stop on Market Street, and also A Nation's Hope, the story of boxing legend Joe Lewis, and a number of other critically acclaimed young adult novels, including Mexican White Boy, uh, The Living, The Hunted. Thank you so much for meeting with me today yeah. and for agreeing to be our author of the month. It's a pleasure. Yeah, welcome. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about your journey, how you became a writer, how you decided that this is what you would do? Yeah, well, it's kind of an unlikely story. I think I started out as a non-reader, mm -hmm. which is not the usual path to become an author. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I fell in love with literature in college, mm -hmm. and it was diverse literature. It was House on Mango Street, right. The Color Purple, and those were my entry point into literature. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing for me, I think, growing up is I found like this emotional interior through books. A little bit of a yeah. crime out there, maybe. <laughs> but so I think once I found that there was something for me in books. Then I read everything, not just diverse books, but everything. And I recently read the piece that you wrote for NPR um, about the reluctant reader. I'm going to look and see what the title is. Um, sometimes the tough teen is quietly writing stories. Yeah. And it was really moving. Um, mm -hmm. And you talked about a boy, Joshua, and you also talked about your father. Can you just talk about those briefly? Um, I'm going to link the story on the website. Yeah, here. sure. So, I, you know, occasionally Joshua was very similar to many kids I meet. Mm -hmm. they're, they're kids that they're kind of thuggy. They're mm -hmm. not supposed to be good in the, in the auditorium situation. I was warned about him, like, be careful this kid. We're going to probably have to kick him out, but mm -hmm. giving him a chance. And this kid was really moved by where I come from and how I wasn't, you know, model student mm -hmm. and he came up to me at the end of the, the session and said hey could I show you the stuff I write and I was like okay well this happens a lot but mm -hmm. then when I ultimately read his stuff a couple days later I was blown away and you know this thuggy kid who didn't get good grades had flunked twice was writing very powerful narratives about being in a gang in mm -hmm. uh, San Antonio so that was that. And then my dad is another example of somebody who went to school late. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he entered college in his late 50s. Wow. So, and he, he just excelled. Uh, and he ended up declaring his major in literature. Mm -hmm. Became a reader late in life, and it's changed not only his profession, but how he is as a father, a right. husband. It really, like, changed his whole perception of himself. Right. He changed for him. It totally transformed them. That's awesome. Um, so kind of going along with that, I would say, is there a particular moment um, that was rewarding to you as a writer, so maybe a school visit, or even something that you wrote um, that was just your most kind of rewarding moment? I would say, yeah. Oh, well, I would, I'm going to give you two. Okay. One of them was before I had ever made a dime on writing. Mm -hmm. um, I was an undergrad, and I'd never shown my writing to anybody. Mm -hmm. I remember I, I went to the English department wall and I saw that there was this flyer for a writing competition, like a contest. Mm -hmm. And there were these little, you know, the little things that are like yeah. coming off the Which paper. Tear off. And tear off one. Mm -hmm. I took off the whole sheet of paper and I was like, nobody else can apply. You know? <laughs> like, maybe I'll win. So I took it with me and I apply. I set my stuff in. Mm -hmm. And like four months later, I, I won. It was like two thousand bucks. Wow! And I was so, so. Did you win because you were the only one that applied? No, no. It <laughs> turned out that there were a few other people. Okay. But it was so validating, mm -hmm. and I couldn't believe that I was writing these very like spoken word style mm -hmm. poems that were, you know, there was cursing. That I thought there's no way they would be into that, but they totally were into it, and so it was so validating. So mm -hmm. that that's one, and then. I think as a professional writer, when you get an email from a kid mm -hmm. in a state that you've never even been to, and they tell you how much your book means to them, that's when you realize that your book is starting conversations with some people that you'll never meet. Right. And you're sharing this collaborate, collaborative uh, experience. Mm -hmm. It's just unbelievable. So speaking of collaboration, um, yeah. you've worked with a number of really amazing illustrators. That was a beautiful transition. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering what that process is like. You know, you guys are both creatively kind of coming together. Um, yeah. And uh, Last Stop on Market Street is one that I think is just a beautiful, the words, um, the pictures, they just, you know, really go together and really complement each other. What's that process like? So usually they try to keep the writer and the illustrator separate. 
But in my case, both times I worked with an illustrator who was at the same agent as me. Okay. So I was lucky I got to kind of communicate with them. Mm -hmm. The first one was with Kadir Nelson, who I think is an incredibly um, talented uh, illustrator. Not only an illustrator, he's a fine artist. You right. know? And yes. His stuff is just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, and he had a name in the picture book world already. He right. already written We Are the Ship, which mm -hmm. is just stunning. So I kind of just said, whatever happens, happens with this book. If he wants me to change some text, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I was just, I felt happy to be at the party with mm -hmm. him. So I wrote the text. He asked for like two minor little tweaks, sent it to him. He did the, the illustrations and I, I saw what he did and I was just blown away. With Christian Robinson, mm -hmm. who, by the way, is going to set the world on fire. This guy is so oh, talented. He's beautiful. He's going to do some amazing things. It was a little different. He was mm -hmm. more up and coming. And mm -hmm. We were kind of more uh, you know, on the same level. So he, well, basically the, the process went like this. My agent sent me a link to his blog. Mm -hmm. And on his blog, he mostly has illustrations. Mm -hmm. This before he was even signed with my agent. I saw this picture that he had illustrated of him and his grandmother on a bus. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so beautiful. And my agent said, do you think you could come up with a storyline for this? Mm -hmm. And it turned out, you know, I've been on the bus for four years in L.A. Oh. Um, so I had a lot of experience mm -hmm. with buses. So I was like, absolutely. And then there was this idea that I'd been kicking around, not for a picture book, but just in general. About how we're always inundated with all these ads, you know. You should buy this. You should get this. Mm -hmm. If you want to be happy, you should. You need this. And I was like, God, when you're a little kid, I have a little daughter now. I've been thinking about this. Where's the counter narrative to this? Yeah. I want. And and I was like, maybe you need somebody like Nana, who's yeah, who's an older. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. somebody older that you respect, who can sort of show you the other side. Mm -hmm. And so. I kind of like put that on her character mm -hmm. and then I came up with the story and there were a couple tweets we made after the first uh, the first draft and and then he sent these incredibly skeletal uh, mm -hmm. pictures that you couldn't tell what it was going to be about and I was like okay well I guess we'll just trust him and see what happens and then when the art came in I was just like all right this guy, this yeah, guy just killed it. It's a phenomenal me. story and the language of the story it's just so beautiful. And I think even as an adult reading it, you can appreciate the language. Um, there's a moment where, and I'm not going to quote it correctly, but something about, you know, where CJ should just enjoy the, like when you're surrounded by dirt, you should just enjoy the beauty. You yeah, know? yeah. And it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Right Sometimes now. when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I guess this may go along with it. You can tell me. So. How was it writing, because you started writing young adult books, yeah. is that right? So how was the transition to writing children's books? Um, do you think that there's a different process, you know, how's that? My YA is gritty. It's it's rough. It's mm -hmm. it's the truth that, as I see it, you know, on the quote-unquote wrong side of the tracks. Because mm -hmm. I always write about mixed kids, because okay. I'm half Mexican. So, so am I. are you really? I am. Oh, look at this. <laughs> um, but, so I always write these real rough, tough YA books that are not going to be part of the Scholastic Book Fair, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would think, okay, when you do a picture book, that's a pretty big transition. Mm -hmm. But really, it's more natural than people would think because I started writing poetry. Mm -hmm. I started writing spoken word style, like rhythmic poetry. So when I wrote uh, A Nation's Hope with Kadir, mm -hmm. it was like going home. And then with Last Stop, it was just the voice is so ingrained in me from when I was 18 through 24 mm -hmm. that it was it was incredibly natural. To me, the sound of the prose mm -hmm. is as important as the, the story. I agree. So, because it's read aloud. It's usually. read aloud. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and I really want just, I want the music to be there as mm -hmm. well as the story. Mm 